Welcome everybody to a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video today and this week sees the release of the drama Nomadland hitting store shelves along with Kino Lorber releasing a 4K edition of the Clint Eastwood Western classic The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly and speaking of 4Ks Arrow Video is releasing a 4K edition of the surreal, mysterious, psychological drama thriller Donnie Darko, plus much, much more. So let's go see the deals, exclusives, and we are at our first location, Walmart. So let's go in and see what they got. All right, everybody, we are in at... Walmart. Oh boy. Yes, they do actually have some of the stuff from last week, as I've been predicting week after week after week, guys. I mean, they have body brokers, they have crisis, ancient aliens, season 13. Damn, they went that long on ancient aliens? 13 seasons? My god, man. Well,. Aliens are quite fascinating, so you could probably get 13 seasons out of that. They could, Earwig. Oh, jeez. They've had Willy's Wonderland, Shadow in the Cloud. Yeah, still a little bit of soul love. Still a little bit of Wonder Woman 84 love. But I gotta admit, guys, they're not really restocking Wonder Woman 84. Not really. Might I make a suggestion? If you're not restocking Wonder Woman 84... Why not just end up actually stocking some of the newer stuff so that you actually have stuff to show off and not empty sections? Just saying. I know it's a wild concept, guys, but it would probably help. You know, just saying. Ah, yep. Yet again with good old Walmart. Some of the stuff from last week, but none of the stuff this week. Let me guess. Next week, we'll see some of the stuff this week. And yet, the cycle continues. And then over in this new release area on the side, not really new releases, guys, but a whole bunch of, like, newer films that have come out not too long ago. It's, it's really filled, man. I mean, they definitely did a good job in this section. But I'm seeing some things that I haven't seen before. Like, they do have this new slipcover for Midway. The DVD has it, and so does the Blu-ray. I don't think I've seen this slipcover before. I actually really like it. It almost looks like something out of, like... Like almost like a World War II poster or something for for like recruitment or something like that. It really does. I actually really like it, man. It's kind of weird because for a newer movie, this has a lot of editions. Like there's a steelbook edition out there, the regular editions, now more like slipcover exclusives. A lot of stuff. And I mean, it's a great film. It's a really great World War II, you know, bomber pilot story. It's actually a pretty solid war film, man. If you've never seen it, definitely check it out, man. But this is a really cool slip, man. I know a lot of people really love some unique slips out there. And Midway, this is actually a really nice one, man. For an exclusive slip, actually pretty decent, decent, all, all things considered, man. That's not bad. They also have an exclusive slip for Knives Out. For both the DVD and the Blu-ray. Almost like splotchy watercolors, like splashed onto the character's face. Kind of a weird slipcover, man. I mean, I love the movie. The movie is absolutely phenomenal, and I can't wait for the sequels. I mean, Ryan Johnson's coming back, Dan and Daniel Craig. I can't wait to see what actors they get. I mean, it should be pretty cool. It's a really great, wonderful murder mystery. Definitely reminds me a lot of the classic stuff out there. Not sure about the slipcover, though. I'm not a really big fan of, like, like the character's face on a slipcover. I know they've done a ton of these ones before... That have the character on there and just just the, the slip it's not really doesn't really do much for me i mean interesting kind of splotchy colors on daniel craig's face wow great you know if you like it sure but i'll stick to the wonderful steelbook love that i have for knives out that's for damn sure they got that they also have the same type of one for john wick chapter three the dvd and, and blu-ray i mean i'm not gonna lie that's a badass face, though. <laughs> Keanu's pissed-off face. 
I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> You're damn right, motherfucker. I love this movie. In fact, well, what am I talking about? I love all three of the John Wick movies. They're absolutely amazing, man. I can't wait for the fourth one. Can't wait for the fifth one. I know they're doing a TV show. I heard it's like a, a prequel or something. The Continental, which I can't wait for. These are fantastic action movies, man. And Keanu Reeves is one badass motherfucker, dude. I mean, he was badass before the John Wick movies. Even more now. I think it's older. He gets more badass. How is that possible, man? This is not bad. With another, like, sort of splotchy colors. It's okay. It's not great, but, I mean, the, the, the movie's fantastic. If you haven't owned it yet, definitely do it. And if you get an exclusive flip out of it, hey, best of both worlds. That they've also got one for Rambo Last Blood as well. Man, look at Stallone, dude. He is, he is... He is all kinds of like beat the shit, man. Look at him. He, he, he looks like a prize fighter that just got beat to hell over the years. He's like, yeah, I don't know whether I'm, I'm Rambo or Rocky. <laughs> Which movie is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man. I gotta tell you, the Rambo Last Blood is honestly one of the weaker Rambo films. I mean, I enjoyed it for what it was. I like some of the kills. Him ripping a dude's heart out is always fun to see Stallone do that. But I don't know. I, I kind of would rather prefer the Rambo series end with the last one. The one that happened in Burma where he was literally like like shredding people with with bullets and 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 like almost ripping out their spines or some shit. Like that was a brutal film. And it was a great way to end the series, him going back home. This one's okay with the whole like drug cartel people coming after him and his family it's cool but mm, i almost kind of wish they they do a, another one or if not that like there was an original idea where like rambo was versus like this alien entity or like rambo versus the predator or something it was a really cool concept it was a really cool idea but i don't know if they actually i don't know if it would have ever happened it would have been cool though but I don't know, this one's just okay of a ramble film. Good moments, but not as effective as I'd like it to be. But yet another one where, like, the colors smeared all over the place. But look at his face, man. He, God, that is a guy that's got beat up way too many fucking times, man. Jesus, good Lord. Whew, man. That, and the only other thing I'm seeing that's interesting is they do have, actually, the Collector's Series Edition from Vestron for Little Monsters for $9.96. And this is a great, great deal, man. This is amazing. The The Blu-ray for, for, like, 10 bucks is awesome. I already own this edition, but this is an amazing movie. If you guys have never checked out Little Monsters, please do it, man. Please. It is so amazing, so awesome. Fred Savage, oh man, Fred Savage back in the day was like the king, dude. He was awesome. Howie Mandel playing the the, the main monster, Maurice, is is amazing. The, the makeup effects are really great. I like the creativity with the monsters, and this definitely influenced so many movies going forward, stuff from Disney and so much other stuff. I mean, Little Monsters, man, was was such a great kids movie back in the day. I mean, it scared kids, but also was so imaginative and cool and... And Fred Savage hanging out with, with monsters and having a fun time. There was something about it that was, man, it's just pure nostalgia. I love this shit so much, man. Little Monsters is amazing. And and a Blu-ray from, from Vestron for 10 bucks is a steal, man. And I love the artwork. The artwork is so cool, man. They cause all the trouble, but you'll have all the fun. Oh, so good. God, so fucking good, man. Great. Great goddamn movie, man. Pick that shit up, man. Awesome. Oh, some interesting, unique slips. Vestron love. Not much new stuff, but hey, this is Walmart. What do you expect? Well, all right. Let's head out. I know what you guys are thinking. I definitely know what you guys are thinking. You're saying to yourself, wait a minute, Seth. Why are you still here? Why do you still come to this Walmart when you know you're probably not going to find anything new at all? Okay. Okay, you b might be right on that, guys. <laughs> but I'd like to consider myself a hopeful optimist. I really do, man. And I'd like to think that any store can really change their luck around in the drop of a hat any given week. And truth be told, Walmart has done that a time or two. I mean, truthfully, they, they have. I mean, 
not a lot, but they definitely have. So maybe they will again at some point. I'd like to think they will, guys, truth be told, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I mean, not a lot here. And certainly not anything from this week, but hopefully next week. Well, that's only hope, guys. Well, guess we'll just wait till next week to find out. But in the meantime, how about we go to another location? Hopefully some new physical media to check out. All right, everybody. We are at the second location, Target. But before we do, I got to talk about this article that I saw which was really nice. This guy's experience finally going back to the movie theater after over a year away. I thought it was quite pleasant what he had to say. So I'll dive into a little bit of it. We took our seats and were immediately inundated with trailers for upcoming big budget summer flicks like Black Widow and Fast 9. Another sign the movies in theaters are slowly coming back. The theater itself was fuller than expected and everyone sat in a socially distant manner and were masked at all times except for eating and drinking. When the lights went down, the movie was almost besides the point, as expected. And as the film story unfolded, all the usual elements of a movie theater experience were present and accounted for, including a little kid excitedly announcing each character's name as he or she appeared on screen. A short argument between two people about cell phone use. A child kicking my chair while his mom told him to stop. Visceral reactions during the film's more brutal moments. Audible laughter that made even lines that weren't particularly funny seem 10% more amusing. It was the best. Upon exiting the theater, I realized this might have been the first time since last March I had no idea what else was happening in the world. I turned my phone off when the movie began and didn't check it again until I got home. My mind felt refreshingly clear. It was a feeling I had almost forgotten and will never take for granted again. That's why movie theaters are special, and I'm so, so happy they're back. Indeed, man. Now, look, I still haven't been to the movie theater yet. I haven't. My movie theaters are starting to open again. Some have opened already. Some are about to. And I am very curious to go back. I mean, mind you, I know that it's going to be a much different experience than what it was over a year ago. I mean, I know that. The last time I went to a movie was, I believe, last February or March when I saw The Hunt. And that was it. And after that, everything went completely to crap. And we are where we are, man. And... I'm just kind of curious about it. Look, I mean, I know there's going to be socially distancing. I know there's going to be mask wearing. I know all that stuff. And there's going to be a lot of strict restrictions. And I understand that. And I understand it. It's, it's just essential to still have movie theaters. And it's still essential to have that movie theater experience. You know, as much as I've watched a lot of movies at home during this pandemic, and trust me, I've seen a crap load of them, man. A lot of newer releases and a lot of stuff that, you know, might have had a revival screening at a theater, but uh, because there wasn't theaters open, hey, it's, you know, checking it out on TV. And there's something about that experience that I can't quite explain about going to the movie theater. Whether it was Avengers Endgame where you had so many people clapping and cheering and, and screaming and crying and just the emotionality of it all to even an experience that I had years ago for a little horror movie called Drag Me to Hell when there was literally a bunch of people that were sitting behind me that were talking on their cell phones and like, oh, Lord, oh, I know what's going to happen next. Oh, my God. And I'm, like, thinking to myself, Jesus Christ, like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, you know, I can't say that I like those experiences, but there's something about the theater experience where I, I had that experience, man. That, that I, I'll always remember that experience. It's memorable. Whether it's in a good way or bad way, it's memorable. You know what I'm saying? Like, as much as I love being at the apartment and watching new movies on the streaming services, and it's kind of a nice convenience to it all, it really is, and I can see why people really like it. I can't say that I've had, like, so far a memorable theatrical experience 
at my apartment. I, I can't say that I really have, man. I mean, it's nice. I like it. I get to have my own food and, you know, don't, don't, don't have to pay, pay for shit. It's nice. But, I mean, I can't say that there's been anything memorable about, memorable about it. Whereas with the theaters, there is. And also, look, I mean, we are so much living in a digital age now that the theatrical experience has sort of become a little bit of of more more special more sacred i guess i i would say you, you know back in the day even two three years ago you went to the theaters and it was all sort of there right we always know it's going to be there it's never not going to be there but times have changed only in like two short years where there's no longer a guarantee of anything anymore especially the, the theatrical experience movie theaters are closing others are are damn near in bankruptcy hell and nowadays the theatrical window has shortened quite a bit and some movies don't even go to theaters anymore and so there's a certain level to this experience now that has become a little more important, a little more, a little more special within your heart that you know that when you go to see that movie, yeah, other people might see it at home, but you get to see it on the big screen and there's something about it that can't be beat. Look, I have a 55-inch TV. I know other people have 65-inch, 75-inch. Hell, some people have fucking 80, 90-inch TVs. God bless their hearts, man. I, I don't know if I could watch a screen that, that big, especially at home. But people do, man. And with the sound bars and the audio quality, I mean, you can have a theatrical experience in your own home now. That sometimes rivals the movie theater experience. So a lot of people say, why the hell should I go pay the money when I can just have it at home and have just a better experience? But I don't know if I highly, completely agree with that, guys. I think you can still have a really solid experience at the theater that you're in this big area with a lot of other people sharing that same pulse-pounding experience, the same emotions, the same heartfelt intensity and drama. There's something about it that can't be beat, guys. And nowadays, with the uncertainty in the world and things changing, don't take any of that for granted, man. Just don't. I'm not saying you have to see every movie in the theater, but the ones that you really want to see, go out and do. Support movie theaters. Be safe, of course, but make sure you go because those experiences... You can't replace them. They can't be beat. And whether it's a good experience or a bad experience where you wish people would just shut the hell up, it's still an experience regardless. And something about being at home, even though it's convenient, and I kind of love it at times, definitely can't be beat. I'm kind of curious as to what you guys think. Definitely let me know. As far as this week is concerned, yeah, not going to lie, it's another slow one. But... Hey, we could see something over at Target. Maybe. Kinda. Hopefully. <laughs> Sorta. <laughs> let's hope we do, guys. But the only way to find out is that go inside. So let's head in and check it out. Alright, everybody. We are in at Target. And you would think it's a little bit of a dead zone. But at least there's one thing to check out. Hey, one thing's better than nothing, just saying, man. And that is the Blu-ray Digital Vanquish for $16.99. The DVD for $14.99. Now, I got a chance to watch this on Amazon Prime. And I decided to watch it because I was like, Morgan Freeman, Ruby Rose, it's an action film. Why the hell not? So I figured, what the hell, man, I'll just give it a go. Five gangs, one woman, one night, a thousand bullets. Damn. One hell of a night that is. Damn right, man. All kinds of fun. Now, basically, what this is about is it's about Ruby Rose, who plays this ex-drug courier. And she's gotten out of the game. She's been out of it for a really long time. And the reason why she gets into it is 
because her daughter gets kidnapped by Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman is this old ex-cop who's kind of gotten into the drug trade, knows her, and basically says, hey, look, I kidnapped your daughter. You're going to do these drug runs for me. And if you don't, I'm going to kill your daughter. And so she's forced to get back into the game and all the complications of it and the action that ensues f from there. Okay, right? Sounds sim simple enough. Interesting concept. Could be good. Could be bad. I got to admit to you. Uh, see, I like a good action flick. But here's the thing. A lot of action films that have come out in recent years, they've really upped the game. And I feel like we've been upping the game for a long time, right? I mean, you've had movies like the Bourne films that really upped the game. The newer James Bond movies, John Wick. It feels like every now and again, we're getting more bigger action. We're getting more more basically just in insane stunts and and then another action movie comes along and you think geez god this is what action movies used to be <laughs> and the vanquish is kind of that i'm not saying it's terrible because it's not the problem is it's just kind of boring at times and I think that's really the problem with this movie overall. I mean, the action here is very choppy. The editing is all over the place. It's not really all that in exciting or intriguing. It's a lot of, like, long talking sequences. And you'll get maybe 10 seconds of somebody getting shot in the head, but you barely get, get to see it. And you barely get to see the action maneuvers. It's just like... Like... And then done, right? It's like, it's like the talking and talking and yes, I have to do this job and you know, you're telling me your life story of how you've been dealing with Morgan Freeman's character and how you don't like him, yada yada. And then, oh, quick action scene. And you're like, oh, what, 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 wait, wait a minute, I thought this was an action movie. What just happened? <laughs> like, like, it just goes by in a blink of an eye, man. And it really sucks, dude. I mean, that's a... That, I mean, the action just is barely there. And not only that, but... I got to admit... That a lot of these actors... I mean, they're good. They're decent actors. But they look like they could give a shit. I mean, Morgan Freeman looks bored as hell in this movie, man. I mean, shit, what am I talking about? He looks bored in the goddamn cover art. <laughs> I mean, jeez. He's... He really just looks like he's going through the motions and basically this movie is just a paycheck film i mean honestly it's just it's just a movie that he can get a paycheck on he really does not give two fucks I mean, you can tell in in the movie man as far as ruby rose is concerned i mean she's okay she's kind of trying but she's not leading female action material and so it just kind of comes off as mundane and weak at times you know what this kind of reminds me of in a lot of ways? Do you remember back in the day, the big VHS DVD boom? You'd go to Blockbuster or Hollywood Video or those were on rental stores when the big boom was going on. It was at the height. And you'd get all of these knockoffs. Horror knockoffs and action knockoffs, drama knockoffs, sci-fi, you name it. And some of them were good. The gamble was worth it. And then other times, actually what am I saying? A lot of times the gamble wasn't worth it. It was actually, a lot, a lot of them were flat out crap and boring and not worth your time. Vanquish is that. I hate to be honest with you, but that's the, the truth, man. I mean, it's got an interesting idea about this courier that has to get back in the game because it's trying to s save her daughter. I mean, there's an interesting idea there. But the way the movie's executed and the actors are going through the motions, the, the action itself is just barely there and when it when it is it just goes by in the blink of an eye and and you're like wow geez that was exciting all of one minute <laughs> like that's about it man i mean i hate to say it but this feels kind of like a weak ass limp dick action attempt that's trying to ape off of better films like john wick and 
you know, born and bond, but it just can't do it. Maybe it's the budget. Maybe it's the fact that Morgan Freeman is sitting in a, a wheelchair, basically being like, you need to get the drugs. I am holding your daughter hostage. Like, that's it. I'm like, wow. I mean, Morgan Freeman, if you would have told me the, the, the man who once played God would be in a very mundane action film, not giving a shit, I would have told you you're fucking wrong. <laughs> but I suppose, suppose miracles do happen. <laughs> <laughs> or at least not the ones you expect. Oh, God. Vanquish. I gotta admit, guys, it's a very Olympic movie. Not really worth your time. It's an hour and a half that, honestly, you could spend watching a much better action film and not watching Ruby Rose do really terrible action sequences on a motorbike. Yeah. Pass on it, guys. Honestly. You won't regret passing on it. Just saying. Ah, uh, I mean, good cover art. Not gonna lie, the cover art's cool, but the movie is all kinds of dog shit. Not dog shit, but just, well, boring dog shit. Yeah, stay away from that one, guys. Other than that, not much else to show off here. I mean, none of the other new releases, but hey, I wasn't expecting the one. So, you know what? I'll kind of take what I can get. You know what I'm saying? All right. Let's head out. I thought we might see a little bit more this week here at Target. I don't know why. I just kind of thought maybe because, like, Nomadland, considering that that just came out, big award winner, indie film, you'd think Target would have it. They didn't. However, look, we did get one thing. And let's be honest, <laughs> the way this week is probably shaping up, one thing is definitely better than no nothing. And considering <laughs> what uh, Walmart was, I'll take it. So, yeah. I was hoping for a little bit more, but yeah, it turned out to be kind of a bust here at Target. I mean, hey, better than the first Walmart, so give it credit for that. But as I said, slow physical media release weeks means uh, slim pickings here at Target, and that remains true to this day, guys. Well, one thing is better than nothing, even if it's a really crappy action movie with a very bored Morgan Freeman. Take what I can get. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's head to the next location. Hopefully, more physical media. Please. All right, everybody. We are at our next location, the second Walmart. I'm going to go in and check out if there's any interesting indie titles. If there is, I will head back to FilmFan108 HQ and show it off to each and every one of you. But before I do that, I got to talk about a trailer with you guys and that is none other than the next Marvel Cinematic Adventure, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Yes, indeed, man, that trailer dropped not too long back. I finally got a chance to watch it. And I got to admit, right, so it's interesting when, when the Marvel Cinematic Universe started, all those years back, 2008, and I remember when the first trailer for Iron Man came out, and everyone said, well, I don't know why you're starting with Iron Man, because he's a very obscure character, not many people know about him, and yeah, maybe that was kind of true, but I had heard of Iron Man, at least. I knew of the character, I had heard about it. I had never heard of Chang Shi before. I've never heard of this character. So this is completely new to me. This character is completely new. And I gotta tell you, from the trailer, it really intrigues me. This idea of this, this guy that has always been in his father's shadow. And he's not really done things with his life that maybe he was meant to or supposed to. And the idea that his father is like, no, no more of this nonsense. You're coming with me. You're following me. And you're going to take your rifle place next to my side. And basically, it's the story of this guy who grows to become a man, uh, a hero, and somebody who 
who ultimately wasn't expecting to save the day, but has to become the savior at the end of it. It's a very interesting trailer, and I like the concept of it, and I like the idea that they are still picking up threads from the Iron Man movies, the idea of the Mandarin. I remember, by the way, when Iron Man 3 came out, and holy shit, talk about the reaction that that got, man. I mean, there's supposed to be the Mandarin in that movie, and it ends up being, spoiler alert, that he's not really the Mandarin, and that it's all sort of this mind game that's being played with this other organization, and they just put this guy up as a front for, for, for all of their sort of evil deeds that they were doing. And a lot of fans got really pissed off at that. They got livid, baby. And I remember them doing a, a little Marvel short film there on one of the Blu-rays that kind of hinted that the Mandarin is very real. That that they were kind of backpedaling a little bit. And I kind of appreciated that. Because, yes, I did like the twist in Iron Man 3. But at the same time, I did kind of want a very serious Mandarin at the same time. And it looks like we're definitely going to get this in Shang-Chi. I am really looking forward to that. It looks really cool. The fight sequences, the the colors, the artistry, the, the beautiful photography. It looks amazing man and I definitely like certain shots in the movie I got really big vibes of like um Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon and a lot of beautiful fight choreography that you've seen in other really masterful movies within the martial arts genre it looks very intense it looks thrilling it looks like some very interesting colorful characters mix in a little bit of awkward comedy with Aquafina. <laughs> It looks like it's going to be a really solid, good time. It looks like it's going to be a really great introduction for a not very well-known character. And I kind of like it. it. I'm digging the trailer a lot, man. And I, I like the vibe that it's given off. I like the idea of this reluctant hero. I like the idea of the father being the bad guy and being the Mandarin, like, that looks really cool, man, and I like how he looks very evil and imposing and, and, you know, like, badass, it, it, it looks cool, man, I gotta tell you, for a character that I don't know, I'm going into this blind, cold, man, other characters I've known stuff about, but not with this one, but I gotta admit, I am looking forward to it in a big, bad way, so... Yeah, you know, just the first impression from the trailer, the fights look really cool, the the characters look intriguing, and, and you know, Marvel just does really well with, with these movies that you're not expecting much from, because you think, ah, you know, it's a, these lesser characters, they really surprise you. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, or, or Captain Marvel, or, or something, this one looks really intriguing to me, and... It just looks like a really fun, wild, great martial arts action. I am definitely looking forward to this in a big, bad way. Let me know what you guys think. Marvel, man. You know, after Avengers Endgame, there was a lot of talk of they're not going to be as good as they, they, they were. They've lost a lot of their roster and the, the big heavy hitters. But they're slowly building back up, baby. Slowly building back up. Getting the band back together. Some good stuff coming from the MCU. I'm definitely looking forward to it, man. So let me know what you guys think about that. In the meantime, let's head into the second Walmart and hopefully some good physical media worth checking out. Well, I am back in at the second Walmart, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not going to lie, just like the other stores that we've been to, it's pretty much slim pickings here at the second Walmart, man. Uh not a lot that they stopped as far as like new releases however there is a few things that I found I had to search a little bit to sort of find a few things worth talking about stuff that had kind of passed me by before or stuff that I'm just seeing now so not a lot to show off this week but a little bit does go a long way not gonna lie especially with weeks like this so without further ado Seth with only a few things to show off this week, it's still always worth it to show off that indie goodness. So, come on, man. You gotta do me a favor and show off that physical ma media goodness, will ya? Please? How badly do you want me to show off the media? 
I was thinking about making you a bag, but I'm not that cruel. I only wish. Yeah, guys, we are seeing a little bit of media at the second Walmart. Not a lot. But as I said, something is better than nothing, truth be told. And, you know, these past few weeks have been really on the rough side, man. I mean, it's been not that great. And sometimes you do get a little bit discouraged. You're like, oof, there's nothing at this store, there's not much at that store, this store's a little bit weak. And you start to come away with the feeling of, wow... Physical media is really in trouble in a big, bad way. However, these weeks happen. And with the pandemic, they just get heightened a lot more, man. I mean, physical media is still as powerful as ever. The stores, not so much at times, man. I mean, look, we know that if it's not huge, gigantic re releases or at least something new with a big-name star in it, that these stores... Uh, they don't have a lot of interest in it, right? And so it gets hard sometimes finding the media. It truly, honestly does. However, you know, look, that just means that you got to try a little bit harder to find the media. That's not a bad thing. I'm willing to do that. And that's what I tried to do for you guys every single week. I mean, big name titles, small releases, it doesn't matter. Everything is worth it for me to show off to you guys. Even the smallest little B-movie ridiculous cheese... I still want to go out of my way to show it because it's physical media. It's worth it. And I think that any media, no matter DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, is always worth showing off to you guys because physical media is worth it regardless, man. To keep that format alive, to keep it thriving, it's people like us out there that really need to keep the bell ringing. And I definitely want to keep on doing that, guys. So... There are weeks where it seems absolutely like you have this sunken feeling in your chest that that physical media is just going down the tubes. But fear not, because it's definitely still there. Yes, you got to search a little bit more certain weeks, but it's always worth it. And you always find something to dive into. And this time around, not much, but doesn't mean you can't have fun with it. And this stack, I think I'm definitely going to have a lot of fun. You know what time it is. Walmart indie goodness time. Yes, indeed. A small stack, but still very much worth it, guys. So let's dive right in. With the first title being The Little Penguin Pororo Treasure Island Adventure? You never do small. For a big adventure. What the hell is this? <laughs> what? Oh, and it's a Dove approved title at that. Really? How is this a Dove approved title? What sort of hidden Christian messaging is in this movie, man? What, do all like the animal pirates start to like, like, speak like Bible verses or some shit? Like, what the hell? What? What is this? An adventure shared with friends is the best treasure of all. Especially when they're pirates. Yes, indeed. When Plucky Penguin Poro and his animal pals decide to be the world's greatest pirates, they discover a treasure map that brings them to a remote tropical island. Oh, you don't say. There they meet Maroon Captain Silver, who teaches them how to be good swashbucklers. But nasty Captain Dark shows up too. And wants the riches for himself. Ooh, that goddamn evil bastard. <laughs> oh, boy. To claim the gold guarded by the fierce sea monster Kraken, they must solve a series of magical puzzles. But how can they escape the island that holds them all captive? Magic sea turtles, perhaps? Just taking a wild guess, guys. Oh, man. The voice... By the likes of Polly Shore and John Heater, of course. Why wouldn't they? I don't think they can get much work else, guys. I ain't gonna lie. Good God. I mean, look at this, man. The animation is really piss poor. Look, it's almost like like 
PS1 graphics, or actually, you know what, I'm being kind, because PS1 graphics are pretty good. This this is like, this is like maybe Nintendo 64 graphics or some shit. Look at that, that is really terrible graphics, man. Jesus, that's fucking horrible. <laughs> good God, man. Ah, uh, and as far as Pauly Shore and John Heater, I mean, John Heater, I mean, Napoleon Dynamite is awesome, but outside of Napoleon Dynamite, I mean, has he really done anything else worthy of you know, the name recognition, I don't really think he has, man, I mean, I, I don't, I don't blame him for taking this, this voice role, because, I mean, what else he got, I mean, as far as Polly Shore is concerned, dude, do you know, I used to worship Polly Shore, I'm serious, man, I used to worship that motherfucker, I mean, anytime when I was younger, MTV Spring Break was on, and Polly Shore was on, man, I was turned to the channel big time. I was a fan of Pauly. I mean, Encino Man, in the army now. That guy was the tits. He was. I mean, truth be told. And now, not so much. I mean, you know, he, he's trying to do those, those like, cameo shout-outs. He did that really terrible comedy. I think it was Guest House or something. Really terrible, man. He was just... I don't know, just really trying to, like, be the old Pauly Shore, but it comes off as really terrible and just, like, trying to remember the old times but not doing it nearly as good as it used to. Ah, uh, yeah, I hate to say it, man. And I guarantee in this movie, guys, I guarantee it, that at some point the character he plays has to say, He's in the juice. <laughs> Like, if he don't say that in this fucking movie, man, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> like, Jesus, goodness gracious, man. Uh, I don't know, this is a weird one, man. I mean, the animation looks like shit. It's a Dove-approved title. I don't know why the hell it's Dove-approved, man. I mean, it must it must have some sort of hidden messaging in it somewhere, goddammit. And Polly Shore and John Heater voice, voicing these characters... You know, there's there's going down the shitter, and then there's, like, going down the shitter, like, when the shitter is, like, filled to the brim. And, uh, I hate to say it, but Polly Shore and John Heater, yeah, I think they've actually reached that point in their careers. <laughs> Nowhere else to go from here but up. Jeez, let's hope. And then we got a little iceberg glove. The Icebreaker, based on a true story. I'm not going to lie, I actually kind of really like, like that cover, man. Uh, I like that, with, with the ship turned over and the fire and, oh man, they're so fucked. <laughs> oh boy, what is this about? Antarctic, 1985, the icebreaker Gromov was trapped after trying to dodge a giant iceberg. For 133 days in cold and deafening silence, the crew attempted to find a way out, knowing that one false move could be the death of them all. Ooh, kind of like Titanic meets the Donner Party? <laughs> oh no, oh no, man, they're, they're going to start eating. Eating some body parts, man. Arms, legs, face, man. Whatever they they can get their not their hands on, baby. Oh my god, nothing's getting spared in this movie. Shit. Oh boy. You know what, man? I like a good survival tale. I really do, man. You know, it's it's movies like, you know, 127 hours that I really in, enjoy about you know some guy that's trapped. And doesn't have barely any means to survive and somehow miraculously survives it out of sheer will and ingenuity. And there's something about that that I really love and really appreciate, man. I mean, and it's wild to think that this is a true story. The idea of the iceberg and the idea of, you know, all these people trying to survive for all these days and running out of food and running out of water and resources and just the simple will to survive. It's probably a really amazing story. It depends on on how they do it, guys, because truth be told, 
if you have a decent budget, you can pull off the effects, you can pull off the idea of the cold really affecting you and the iceberg stuff and being in Antarctica. I mean, that stuff would be very effective. If you don't have the money for it, this comes off as kind of cheesy and unfortunately, Olympic effort, maybe. I mean, it could go either way, but I like the idea of the story. I like the idea of this iceberg coming at them and the will for them to survive. And by the way, I mean, let, let's be real. For that many days, 133 days, they had to have run out of food and water, right? I mean, seriously, at least food. I mean, if they're not eating somebody in this movie, there's a problem. I'm just saying. I mean... You know, if I was on that ship, right, I would probably be safe. Because I'm like 130, 140 pounds soaking wet, guys. I mean, they're not eating me. I mean, I'm uh, I'm not good eating. I mean, I'm I'm also Jewish. I'm, I'm very high in salt, guys. But, I mean, if there's a decently sized person with a lot of weight on them, well, you know. He sure would look tasty on the George Foreman grill. Just saying. At least it wouldn't be me. Monster Zone, yeah, baby, yes. Look at that, man. Oh, baby, monsters will roam, friends will unite, and a hero will rise. Mm, very nice. I like the co cover to that. Very colorful. Definitely would bring the kids in. Oh, and speaking about bringing the kids in, another Dove Approved title. What kind of hidden Christian messaging is in this movie? I wonder. Oh, baby, what is this? Who let the monsters out? Who? 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 who let the monsters out? Who? 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 who let the monsters out? Oh, oh okay, I'll stop. <laughs> I just couldn't help myself, guys. Oh, boy. Oh, imagine Harry Potter as a science nerd, and you've got Danny Dawkins. Wait a minute. So, his parents got killed by a maniac. He's got a big old scar on his head. He's he's being hunted by by people constantly trying to, to kill him. He's just like Harry Potter, right? I doubt that. Oh, boy. At a private boarding school for geniuses, Danny teams up with classmate Liz to fix the school's broken nuclear reactor. Yes, because every private kid school needs a re nuclear reactor. Yeah. Let's continue. Uh, but when they fix it, they open a portal to another dimension, unleashing a horde of slimy monsters that terrorize the campus. Now he and Liz must invent a way to send those nasty creditors back home. This hilarious family adventure stars Jamie Bell and Ruby Rose. Talk about Ruby Rose, man. Ah, a little voice acting talent love, dare I say, she's bringing to, to this little gem, I suppose. Oh, boy. You know, I got to admit, this movie takes a lot from past experiences and past movies. I mean, first of all, hello, Little Monsters? I mean, it takes a lot from Little Monsters. Clearly influenced this movie in a big, bad way. Of course, you've also got Monsters, Inc., Monsters University, Monsters vs. Aliens, if you remember that one. was actually a pretty solid animated movie, dare I say, man. I mean, it's pretty good. It takes a lot from other films for sure, but I like the idea of of battling monsters. There's something about monsters that's really cool, isn't there? I mean, even when you're a little kid, they're kind of always fascinating. I mean, they're a little terrorizing, and you know, you, you, you're kind of scared by them, but they're fascinating. You want to know more. And I think for kids, monsters are really are really cool. It's just something about them that just scratches a certain itch when you're a kid that I think still resonates with adults 
at certain times. I mean, I, I look at a movie like Little Monsters, and I still love it to this day because it brings out, out the kid in me in a lot of ways. Just remembering that movie and remembering the different monsters and the designs. I mean, it's all, always cool. I mean, and in animated form, you could do some really cool designs with monsters, to be fair, man. And I got to admit, the animation here, at least from the cover and and the back here honestly doesn't look half bad i mean i gotta admit the animation looks way better than what the animation in pororo is i mean that looks really terrible this looks at least halfway decent man so i mean give it that much jamie bell ruby rose obviously rue ruby rose is playing playing lives and of course jamie bell is obviously playing danny it could be a good little fun monster tale. I think it could be, man. It has the potential to be that, at least. At the at the very least, it could be a cool one for, for kids. And why wouldn't you introduce more monsters to kids? It's just fun. Slimy, yucky-looking weird m monsters. Every kid's wet dream. <laughs> Come on, man. That'd be cool, dude. I just wonder, why the hell is this Dove approved, man? How is this stuff approved? I mean, are the monsters somehow like hidden Catholic priests that are are preaching the word of God? <laughs> like, what is going on here? Oh man, what the hell? I have no idea why it's a dove approved title, but I gotta admit, it does look pretty cool. And it might be a really cool one one for kids, to be honest with you. So this one could spark that inner love for monsters that you're looking for. Isolation can be a killer. Who knew? Surprise, surprise, with a safer at home. Oh, look at that. Nice cover, actually. But this chick is all kinds of trouble. Honey, what kind of deathly hijinks have you been up to? I wonder... Two years into the coronavirus pandemic, really? It's a coronavirus pandemic movie, all right. I wasn't really thinking that it was, but I kind of should have. I mean, it says isolation is a killer, safer at home, kind of makes sense. Two years into the pandemic, this movie predicts the future. Ooh, let's hope not, guys. A group of friends throw an online party with a night of games, drinking, and drugs. After taking an ecstasy pill, things go terribly wrong, and the safety of their homes become more terrifying than the raging chaos outside. Really? I wonder. I mean, there is a lot of problems when you take ecstasy. I mean, you know, you start to have the... the sort of... The unnerving sense to want to dance, use glow sticks, you sweat profusely. Yeah, I can see how it wouldn't be safe. <laughs> you would you would think if you're taking ecstasy, like the one place you would be safe is at home, right? Because, you know, you're not out in the public, you're safe right where you are, unless that ecstasy is like, one of the like most powerful shit ever like it's laced with like pcp or whatever shit is that else is like out there on the drug market like god man what the fuck did they take they just didn't take a regular ecstasy pill they took like a super duper ecstasy pill man jesus like some something that literally is like altering their minds and and turning them against each other right because that's got to be the thing like it's paranoia and you know they start to attack one another it's got to be something in that vein right yeah, and then, like, they, they can't stay home anymore, and then they're roaming the streets, and then police are after them because they're not, they're, they're not properly adhering to safety coronavirus guidelines. I mean, come on. You know, when you're, when you're raging and paranoid and trying to kill people, you have to remember, you still need your mask on. Okay, you still need to be safe. It's a must. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord man i i don't know about this one man it's kind of weird i mean why why can't you just fucking play monopoly why can't you and your friends come over and play monopoly right i mean what's wrong with the with a little candy land and some red wine why the fuck would you take ecstasy man why 
Jesus, man, smoke a little ganja and shut the fuck up. Jeez, man, damn. Not telling you, dude. Now, I got to be honest with you. One time, long, 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 long time ago, I went to this nightclub with my friend, right? And we weren't, well, I wasn't drinking. He was, but I wasn't drinking because I was driving, right? But I still wanted something to drink. And so I said to my friend, I said, I'm going to go grab a bottle of water, you know, you know, from the bartender, whatever. And he's like, don't do that. Don't, don't get water. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? I mean, I, I'm thirsty. I need something. Why not water? And he's like, don't do it. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why? He says, because everybody is going to think that you're on ecstasy. So what the fuck are you talking? He says, because when you take ecstasy, you, you basically are like immensely thirsty. Like your throat is dry. You need something. And most people drink water. And so I literally had to spend the night not drinking anything because apparently everyone was, would think I'm on ecstasy and I would, I would be some sort of druggie. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, God damn it, man. Like, like you can't have any, anything to drink anymore without somebody suspecting some sort of shit. Good God, man. Ay, ay, ay. You know what? Look, man. I'm not a drug person. I would never take ecstasy in my entire life. Hell, I wouldn't even really do my, much of mar- marijuana. I'm just not not that guy. Most likely, I'd get the munchies. What the hell am I talking about? But, you know, honestly, it just seems like stupid people doing stupid things, get, getting killed, and absolutely deserving it. I just... A night of games, drinking, and drugs... Just, god damn it, just fucking play a game of risk and have a little bit of Miller Lite or Jack Daniels and smoke a little weed, relax, chill out, and have a decent night. The fuck? (sighs) Motherfuckers and their stupidity. Even during the pandemic... Well, stupidity still reigns. And especially with this movie, stupidity is all over the place, baby. Stupid motherfuckers. It's infectious. Oh, my God. Good luck luck to, to those people. I hope they die quick. But very painful. Oh, indeed, man. But look, man, some very interesting second Walmart indie goodness. It can't be beat. And this stack definitely proves it. Taking ecstasy pills during a pandemic. Ah, the terribly animated animal pirates. Oh, kid geniuses fighting slimy monsters, and the lesson of always avoiding icebergs. Wait a minute. Didn't Titanic already teach us that? Ah, hell. Why not learn the lesson twice? Yes, indeed, baby. What a interesting stack. Small stack, but quite fascinating to talk about. Damn right, man. Well... Hope you enjoyed that little dive into the second Walmart goodness. Now, truth be told, guys, I'm going to be honest with you, that uh, physical media isn't really the strongest this week. And actually, truth be told, the past few weeks, as I said before, have been really rough. And it just means a little bit more effort to hunt, dare I say. But... It does get tough because people get discouraged. I mean, truth be told, they do, guys. You have no idea how many times that I see people looking at the physical media when I'm doing these videos. They want to find certain titles, and there's just nothing there. It's empty. In fact, a guy literally came up to me at Walmart this week. Literally came to me at the first Walmart this week, saw me filming. When I stopped, he actually came up to me and he said, I totally agree with everything you're saying. 
and he was like, he was like, I'm sick and tired of not finding things in the stores. I don't want to go online. I want to find the media. I want to find the physical stuff in the stores here. And look, he's not wrong. There's still a hunger for it. People want to buy. The unfortunate thing is that these stores, I think it's been drilled into their head so much that physical media is dying. And it's been drilled into their heads that digital is where it's at and that online sales is where it's at. And they've decided that they're just going to give up. But I've shown you time and time again that when you put out the physical media, if you put it out, they will buy it. It's just simple. You put it out, they're going to buy it, man. But if you don't put it out, if you don't showcase it, then no one's going to buy it. And it's just going to sit there rotting. And no one wants it. I don't want that. I want to see physical media survive. I want to see it thrive. And these stores have to understand that. And sometimes that's easier said than done, man. I mean, truly. There are certain weeks like this week where you could really hit your head against a wall. Really thinking about the fact that, my God, why don't they just have this? Or why don't they just have that? And, and why can't they stock it and everything? And you get frustrated. And you get angry. And I get it. I understand it. Physical media is going through a transition now. To be fair, physical media is. And that transition is the fact of how much it has to deal with digital and the pandemic and how a lot of factors have contributed to the stores maybe turning a blind eye to it. But... I think as long as we continue to support physical media, as long as we go out of our way and maybe find stuff that's worth it in the stores. If, if you find a title that you want to buy in the stores and it's for a good price, buy it. Because that tells these people, oh hey, physical media is still worth it. People are still buying it. Maybe not as much as it used to be. These are not the days of media play in Circuit City anymore. Those days are gone. And they ain't ever coming back, I hate to admit it. But even though these stores might think physical media is dying, it's not the truth. It's not the truth at all. And I think that the more that we can support physical media, it is worth it. And just know that your hard-earned money my hard-earned money is going to the preservation of physical media. That every dollar that we spend on physical media goes back into keeping it alive. And that is worth it. Every single penny, every single dollar is worth it because you keep this format alive. Yes, I'd like to see more stuff in store, but buy it however you can buy it. Because keeping physical media alive is so, so vitally important. Because it means that, that people will still get a chance to experience it. And still get a chance to buy even the indie titles that everybody ignores sometimes are still worth it. Because that money goes into these retailers and these outlets feeling like physical media is still possible. That it's still a thing. There's a lot of stuff that has went with the dinosaurs. There's a lot of stuff. And, you know, you may not realize it, but physical media is always on the brink of being phased out. There's always the next best thing that's out there. There always will be. But as long as we support it in one way or another, then it tells these companies to still keep on investing in it. And that's what I want to try to keep thriving. And that's what I want to try to keep doing every single week, man. It's to let you guys know what's out there and to give you guys the heads up of, hey, this, this cool thing is in the store. Because maybe you might want to buy it. And maybe these stores will keep on giving physical media a chance because you care and I care. And that's all we can possibly do, guys, 
is show them that we care and hopefully they get the message. Hopefully they do, guys. <sighs> Let's hope. But to be honest with you, this week, ugh, pretty damn rough, baby. Pretty damn rough indeed. I don't know what the next store is going to have for us, but let's hope there's something. Let them that next location, and hopefully, let's hope more physical media to come. All right, everybody, we are at our fourth location, and when it comes to physical media, this is usually a guarantee. But the past few weeks, not so much. But we're gonna try our hand, none other at the Beast, baby. Yes, Best Buy, the Beast, baby. I'm gonna go in and check out what releases does Best Buy have? Cause I'm not gonna lie, man. As of late, Best Buy has been a little on the limp dick side. And this week has been a struggle finding physical media, man. So, oof, I don't know what Best Buy has in store for us. God, I hope they have something good. Fingers crossed. Let's go in and see what we got this time at the good old beast. Please. All right, we are in at Best Buy, ladies and gentlemen, and oof. Yeah, this is rough, man. This is rough. Yeesh. No new releases over on this side, guys. I mean, we still have the Soul Love. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, the Godfather Coda, Lovecraft Country, the Top Gun Steelbook, which is still a shitload of the Top Gun Steelbook here, man. Damn. And Mulan, Freaky, Mew Mutants, Tenant, yeah, News of the World, there you go. But uh, not much else, man, damn. Uh, a little empty, dare I say? And on the other new release side, well, I hate to say it, but it's more of the same stuff, man. I mean, hey, there's Hilary Swank. Don't sleep with Hilary Swank because, you know, she's going to get jealous and then come after you and try to ruin your life. The next Karate Kid wanting to ruin my life. Great, wonderful, just what I wanted. <laughs> Well, they say still got Fatal, they got Love and Monsters, which is a great movie, by the way. John Wick Chapter 3, which somehow is still under the new releases for some odd reason. Doom Patrol, oh, the wonderful Hobbit and Lord of the Rings goodness. Harry Potter, the 4K, $154, damn. Well, it is 4K, but it probably looks stunning in 4K, not gonna, gonna lie, man. It might, might, it might be worth it for all you Potter heads out there. That, uh, and more WW84 love. But not much, because a lot of it sold, man. Actually, and Steelbooks are still sold out for that one, man. In case you, you guys were looking for that. But 4K love and Blu-ray love, not that bad. I know there's actually a 3D release, I believe, of Wonder Woman 1984. But I've never seen it in the stores, though. Crazy enough. I used to see a lot of 3D releases in the stores, but not no more, man. I ba barely see them anymore. I mean, it's not much as of a big thing as it used to be, to be honest with you. But if you are looking for the 3D, I think you can find it through Amazon or maybe on BestBuy.com or something. But a little bit of Wonder Woman love, a little bit of other physical media love. But to be honest with you, ugh, all kinds of empty, baby. Mother Hubbard's covered for sure. Hopefully there's something still to show off and over in the new release section over on the back end here guys oh boy yeah i mean a little bit of stuff they filled but not a lot Heesh, it's kind of rough over here man i mean they do have that blu-ray of the mortuary collection for 12.99 and i talked to you guys about this last week but i really do mean it this is a really great horror anthology man honestly it's a really really solid one i can't say that about a lot of newer horror anthologies nowadays but this one really scratched an itch that really felt like old school stuff like no Tales from the Hood and Creep Show, uh, Body Bags. I mean, it reminded me of a lot of those really great ones back in the day. I love Clancy Brown in here. All the stories, the blood, the gore, the effects, everything worked really well with this one. I can't say Shudder does really great stuff all the time, 
But this one is a real winner. You guys got to check this one out, man. Really, really fan fantastic, dude. Really amazing. They got that. They also have uh, the Blu-ray Digital of Vanquish for $15.99, of course. Uh, and I kind of want to talk about Ruby Rose for a second. Now... You know, she tries to play the main lead badass female action star here. And I gotta admit, I don't think Ruby Rose does a really good job here playing that role. See, when I think of Ruby Rose, I've always seen her as somebody who is... Uh, plays the supporting actress. I've never really saw her as a lead female action star. I mean... She's done stuff in movies like Resident Evil, The Final Chapter, The Mag, Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. Uh, she was also, of course, took the starring lead in that first season of Batwoman. And, you know, those supporting roles are good. I mean, I really like her in John Wick Chapter 2. I thought she was really good there. But that's a supporting lead role, right? It's not the major lead of the film. And when she was doing Batwoman, like I watched a few episodes of Batwoman and she was decent in it, but I didn't really think that she was like the best Batwoman. Like had she left, like it was going to leave a gaping hole within the story. Like I could see somebody replacing her and not missing a beat. I think Ruby Rose can be a really great badass. I truly do. She's proven it in other films. Like I said, John Wick Chapter 2 is really great. She was pretty cool in, in The Mag. I mean, she was even kind of decent in that lead role that she did in The Doorman. Not great, but okay, I would say. See, the problem is, is that she wants to be a leading action female star, but I don't think she's really proven herself yet. I mean, when you look at Angelina Jolie... Or you look at some of these other actresses out there. I mean, hell, even think about a Chloe Grace Moretz. She's a more effective action star than I think Ruby Rose is. I mean, you look at a lot of these female action stars, and some of them have really got it, and others don't. You know, you either have it or you don't. And that's the real thing about it in Hollywood, right? You either have the charisma, you have the presence, you're able to pull it off, or you just don't. And that's really the thing about it at the end of the day, guys. Is I, As much as I like Ruby Rose, as much as I think she's a decent actress, I don't think she's that next level action star that I think she wants to be. I mean, you look at Lucy Liu, who does a better job at, at action, and you look at Sandra Bullock, who I think does pr pretty good when she does action roles. I mean, you even look at somebody like a, a Selma Hayek. You look back at Desperado, or, you know, even upcoming The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. She looks badass there. She can pull it off. Some people just have it, and some people don't, and... God, I, I hate to say that she doesn't, because I'd like for her to prove me wrong... But I don't think I've seen enough from her yet to really think that she can do it. Am I wrong? Do you think she'll always be in the passenger seat and not in the driver's seat? I mean, she's had chances. Batwoman was a chance for her to really prove herself. I don't think she really pulled it off that well. Truth be told, not really much in the doorman. Like I said, when she does these smaller action roles, she's pretty good. But in the spotlight, I think she fails, guys. And I think here... I think really proves that when you put her in the driver's seat, I don't think she can really take the lead that well. She's decent. If you, if you can't get Angelina Jolie and you can't get some of these other actresses, you get Ruby Rose. Maybe she should have stayed on Batwoman. Would have made a really nice niche for her to do that, but breaking away from that might have been a mistake. Well, time will only tell, but these lead a action roles, yeah, it's just not for her guys uh that's what i think at least i mean definitely let me know man i mean you do get here director's commentary but not much else but honestly guys if you want to see an extremely bored morgan freeman in a doll action movie well <laughs> i got the recipe right here baby if you don't well honestly you're not missing out guys just saying uh, not much this week, to be honest with you. I mean, Mortuary Collection, great they have it finally. 
Vanquish, awesome that they have it. And they actually also have a tag for the Donnie Darko 4K Blu-ray from Arrow, and they don't have it. And damn it, maybe it's late. Hopefully we'll see it in that next week. Please. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, other than that, same old stuff, man. Nothing really crazy, crazy new, unfortunately. Well, that's Best Buy for you. All right. Let's head out. Man, wasn't this so great, guys? I mean, we got to see all those new releases, the Steelbook exclusive love. I mean, damn, man, they had it all this week. Said no one ever at all this week. No, not at all. God, I wish. But we got that instead. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. One new release that we've been seeing. I mean, it's fine. If you like a bored Morgan Freeman in a shitty action movie, sure, why not, man? But, I mean, they didn't have any exclusive Steelbook love. I mean, they did have the Mortuary Collection a week late. But at least they had it, guys. So, I mean, there is that. And I was really hoping maybe some Donnie Darko love. But no such luck. I mean, they have carried Arrow before, but... Ah, better luck next time on that one, guys. I mean, honestly, look at this. I mean... Mm. Ooh, yeah. It's kind of rough here at Best Buy. I'm not going to lie, man. I mean, I, I'm hoping that it gets better before it gets worse. You know, the ever-hopeful optimist that I am that always wants better days ahead for physical media. It, it will happen. Right? Please? Bueller. <laughs> oh God, I hope so, guys. Man, I I really miss the old days, and I I love the Beast, but man, this 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 Best Buy hopefully is gonna get better, dude. I mean, maybe when there's better releases coming out, when it's not such a slow week, maybe I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, guys. To to be fair, man, but uh, I guess that's it for Best Buy. I actually have to go and get a package that I pre-ordered up at the customer service. Yes, I still pre-order physical media and I get it here at Best Buy. I mean, better to do that. I mean, some of the in-store stuff, oof, not so much. Oh, you thought I was gonna tell you what it was. Oh, no, you gotta have to wait till the end of the video for that one, guys. But uh, it's good and well worth it, I swear, man. But uh, at least I can pre-order something new and cool and still get it here. I just wish they would actually have it in store, damn it. Maybe one day it'll get better. The ever hopeful optimist that I am. All right. Let's head out. Wait. Wait one minute, guys. Now, I don't know. I felt kind of bad. There, there wasn't a lot of media to show off this week. Stores just weren't carrying a lot of stuff. And... I figured, why not go to one more location? Why not? Doesn't hurt, guys. So, we are at one last stop of the day, and that is none other than the Dollar Tree, baby. Yes, I want to go back to another Dollar Tree store. You know, I showed off so much media in that last Dollar Tree video. I mean, a mega, mega amount of new media that came out this week at the Dollar Tree. So much really great selection and variety, but I figured, hmm, why not take a gamble at one more location? Maybe some things we haven't seen? We saw a hell of a lot, but there could always be more. Indeed there could be, so why not check out the Dollar Tree one more time, baby? Let's go in and maybe a surprise or two. Could be possible. So I'm here at this location, guys, and I gotta admit, they have a huge amount of physical media. Holy shit, man. Like, they are literally overflowing with DVDs and Blu-rays, man. Shitload of titles. I've kind of started to go through a lot of this stuff, and I gotta admit, most of it is the same stuff I've seen before. And a lot of the same stuff that we saw over at that one location where I did the video recently. So, it doesn't really seem like anything is actually new over here. I mean, a lot of the same stuff. 
cheap thrills of course really great find for a dollar that's really awesome 22 jump street hell ride yeah that's another really great one for a, a dollar you kidding me that's a, that's an awesome deal high rise john dies at the end yes seriously if you find this for a dollar pick it up guys thumb sucker a great movie mm, domestics about conte Started, yeah, a lot of the same stuff that I'm seeing. Wolf blood. Hmm, Jack Hunter's kind of kind of new. We got, huh? Treasure hunters. I don't think we've seen this one before. Run, fight, or die. With two bonus movies. I actually really kind of like the cover to this. Wait a minute. Look at the way she's dressed. Dude, this is a total Laura Croft ripoff. <laughs> Holy shit, look at that. Like, ripping off Tomb Raider a little much, are we? Like, oh my god. This, this is a total, total Laura Croft ripoff. Like, she's dressed exactly the same as the chick from Tomb Raider. Exactly the same. I mean, it's everything but the damn name. Holy shit. I mean, good cover, though, but still total ripoff, man. That's two, what do you got? Pacific Inferno, The Legend of Sea Wolf. Pretty cool synopsis. I mean, I'm not, not going to lie. Some of the cool stuff, but, I mean, you know what this is. This is, this is totally ripping from Tomb Raider. I mean, really, it's just... I mean, the sort of Amazon stuff and the finding the treasure and the gold and avenging their father, like total, total, total Laura Croft ripoff, man. Wow. I mean, if you're interested in Laura Croft Tomb Raider, watch that new movie that came out like a couple years ago. That's actually a really good one. A really, really solid, great Tomb Raider film. Either that or you could always see like Angelina Jolie in the hot Laura Croft outfit, which, by the way, I'm not complaining. <laughs> Probably okay, but lackluster Laura Croft ripoff. Just saying, guys. They got that. Abduction. Scott Atkins, baby. Scott Atkins, I'm telling you. And Clinton's race. Russian Bride. Evil Corbin Burnson. So good. That empty rooms. Wes Craven presents, really. Got a Wes Craven presents movie. 19 Doors, Dark Spirits, Evidence of Haunting. Probably most of these are terrible. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. They're probably really, really hey, they did come from Kmart. And they are Echo Bridge. <laughs> but I the only thing I'd be interested in is West Craven presents Don't Look Down. That might be cool. Other than that, I don't know. It's probably a, sh a shitty collection stuff. I've told you guys before, collection sets are very tricky, and I've said it so many times because a lot of times, what you buy, some of it might be good, and then some of it might be really terrible. You're taking a real gamble. That's what collection sets are, especially from Echo Bridge. Uh, it means for a dollar, it's okay, but it is a bit of a gamble, just saying. Oh, they do have, actually, hold on a second. They have, holy shit, they have George Romero's Survival of the Dead on Blu-ray, too, for a dollar. That's a damn good deal, man. Honestly, I actually really do like Survival of the Dead. I really do, guys. Yes, it is a lesser George Romero movie, to be fair. I mean, it's not as good as Night, Dawn, or Day, but I do think it's better than Diary. And at certain moments, I think it kind of equals land in some ways. I mean, he's not playing with a big budget in this movie, and some of the effects CGI is a little wonky. But I, I enjoy it about... These two families, these, these warring families on this ranch property and the idea that these 
these army soldiers who have kind of been surviving the zombie apocalypse sort of are sort of in the middle of it i do really like it and i think some of the the sort of blood and gore is really cool i like some of the zombie action here the the zombie makeup effects are pretty solid as well I mean, not the best as far as George Romero zombies are concerned, but come on, even a lesser George Romero zombie movie is still better than a lot of the other zombie B movies out there. I mean, am I wrong? I mean, come on, guys. It's a really solid George Romero zombie tale, and for a dollar, that's a pretty solid thing. I already own it. I mean, I already own this film on Blu-ray, so I don't need it, but just saying... For dollar, you can't really go around with a little George Romero zombie love. I'm actually really surprised to see this here. Damn, I I truly am, man. And a lot of great special features, dude. For a dollar, that's a steal. Damn, that's a really really big steal, dude. Solid solid steal. Oh, look what they also have, guys. The little rascal save the day. Who's your favorite rascal? Alfalfa or Spanky? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, a little little rascal's love. God, I love it, man. I remember the actual older movie years ago, like 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 the original movie that came out that was based on like the TV show. I remember that shit. Oh my God, man, just blast from the past, dude. I haven't seen that one in years. They also have Adventures of a Teenage Dragon Slayer. Oh, another one from. Echo Bridge, huh? I kind of like the the artwork. It's kind of cool. Little kid with the sword and the dragon, which looks really cheap. <laughs> oh boy, what are we in for here? Gulliver's Travels, Alice of Wonderland in Paris, The Curious Adventures of Mr. Wonderbird, After the Wizard, The Secret Kingdom. Hmm, this is an odd set. And the adventures of a teenage dragon slayer has Leah Thompson in it, really? Holy shit. I mean I like the titles of the the movies themselves. Some the synopsis looks kinda cool, but dude, you know what you're getting here. This this is gonna be all kinds of cheap. I mean, you know it. I mean this this ain't Willow. Okay, this ain't Willow. This this ain't the page master with Macaulay Culkin. Let's just put it that way. Like this is like a few notches down and when i mean a few notches down like i mean like not b movie not c movie i'm talking d movies this, this this is dude i mean come on it could be a little cool all things considered but i i mean i like a lot of cheesy fantasy stuff i mean crawl and everything like that is cool but you know you know what this is gonna be guys come on you know it might look cool. The synopsis might be kind of cool. The titles, kind of interesting, but dude, this this ain't King Arthur or the Sword in the Stone. They only wish they were. <laughs> oh, I would be very interested to see what kind of movies come out of this set, baby. I, I wouldn't buy it, but I'd be damn curious. Put it that way. God, Client Nine: The Rise and Fall of Elliot Spitzer. I already know the fall of Ali Spitzer. He messaged his dick pics to some random chick. <laughs> like, like that's that's how he that that's how he basically fell as a politician. Never, never send your dick pics to a, a random chick. What are you doing? Ah, <sighs> you wait until you're in person. Damn it! <laughs> oh no! Oh god! <sighs> You had to take pictures of your dick. Seriously. Some, pe some people have really great stories about how the fall of a powerful politician. No, me, me. just send your dick pics. And I gotta admit, it probably wasn't even impressive in the first place. <laughs> oh, damn you, Elliot Spitzer. Oh, a lot of the same stuff. Sushi Girl Blu-ray, which is really cool. That, and that's the end. River World, which looks really kind of fascinating, very interesting stuff. Stuff for that one, man. 
There, protector two with my man Tony Ja. That, and then the last stuff over here. And Vicky Christina Barcelona, which is a really good pickup. And ah, that one's a pretty, pretty, pretty good one too. They got that. Most of the same stuff over there as well. Oh, hold on a second. What? Wolvesbane? What is this? Steelbook from Echo? Yo! Seriously, a steelbook? A little steelbook love at the Dollar Tree of Wolvesbane. What is this? I don't think I've ever heard of Wolvesbane. I'm liking the cover, though. Ooh. Jeremy London, really? This turned around when he is turned into a werewolf. He is approached by Van Helsing, who enlists his help in stopping a deadly vampire from resurrecting the most powerful vampire of all time, the devil, devilish Lilith. Mark DeCascos? Yo! Seriously? What is this? Like, it's a cool little sort of werewolf versus vampire movie? Really? I'm not gonna lie, this definitely probably ain't Underworld, that's for damn sure. <laughs> oh man, it's probably really cheesy. I just have a crazy wild feeling about that. It's probably cheesy as shit, but I don't know, man. I mean, I like Mark DeCosgo's. And Jeremy London, Jesus, man, I hadn't seen him something in a while, man. I, You know, the most thing I remember him from is Mallrats. I mean, he was awesome in, in Mallrats. He's done other stuff, of course, but, dude, Mallrats is my jam, man. Wow, it maybe takes a little bit from maybe, like, American Werewolf in London and Underworld, you know, vampire werewolf lore and sort of mixes into this cheesy vampire and werewolf war movie. I mean, come on, it's, it's got to be better than some of the Twilight shit, right? I mean, Jesus, please, please, God, let it be. <laughs> Dude, this is wild. I've never heard of this movie, but it kind of intrigues me. I don't mind a cheesy werewolf movie or a cheesy vampire movie, as long as I'm having fun with it. I kind of don't mind it. And a steelbook love, too, for a dollar? I gotta admit, I'm a little intrigued. I'm not gonna lie, man. I like that. It could be cheesy as shit, but for a dollar, it might be worth it. I'm just saying. Wow. That is crazy. I was not expecting a steelbook here, especially of a wild werewolf versus vampire movie with Jeremy London, of all people. Seriously? Holy shit. Dude. I mean, they got a ton of stuff here, man. I mean, seriously, the media is overflowing at this Dollar Tree. It's all pretty much the same stuff, but... If you look hard enough, there is a difference or two. I mean, that George Romero survival of the dead, was Bane, the fall of Elliot Spitzer. Spoiler, he just showed his dick's pics. Yeah. No biggie, we've all done it. <laughs> Jeez. Wow, look at the media here, man. There's some interesting stuff here. Not a lot, but a few things here and there ain't half bad. Who would have thought? Surprise, surprise, surprise. And I actually thought I was going to come into the Dollar Tree here and there would be nothing new to see. Now, there wasn't a lot new to see compared to what I did show in the Dollar Tree video. If you haven't watched that, definitely do it, man. I show off a shit ton of media. But truth be told, there was some surprises here that I was not expecting. What the hell is Wolvesbane? <laughs> that looks really intriguing. And a steelbook for a dollar? That's a steal. Not gonna lie, man. And Jeremy London turning into a werewolf? There's something about that that's incredibly intriguing me. <laughs> it really is, guys. No lie. So, yeah. I guess it really is one of those things where, you know, go into your Dollar Trees, man. Seriously. Check them as much as humanly possible because you really don't know what you'll find. All the different variety of media until you dive into it, actually, yourself. And this time around, man, 
is there a lot no lie man there's some pretty interesting stuff if you're willing to hunt for it damn right man and don't we love the hunt i mean seriously come on guys we love it not half bad man certainly some stuff that i'd buy for a dollar damn right man oh, not so bad after all glad i stopped by at the dollar tree a little dollar love never heard nobody and that's for damn sure all right let's head home and finish the video all right everybody that'll do it for the blu-ray and dvd out and about video this week and ah oh, this this was we were in rough waters let's be real here we definitely were in rough waters man and it's really weird because you know Nomadland did come out this week. Truth be told, it actually did, man. And I didn't see it at any of the stores. Not Walmart, not Target, not Best Buy, nowhere. I went to two other Targets. I had went to that, that other Walmart. No way did I ever see Nomadland. And I actually checked my phone multiple times. To see whether it did come out this week. Because maybe I was wrong. And I was thinking I was wrong. Because I'm like, I'm not seeing this movie. And nothing. I know it came out. I looked up on Amazon.com, Blu-ray.com, everything. I looked and it did come out. So I don't know whether it's just late for the sake of being late. Whether right now they're not just carrying it in the stores. I, I don't really know. But it's so suspiciously odd to me because this movie has been gaining a lot of uh, you know award no nominations it won big at the oscars you would think and it's technically disney owns the movie so you would think they would put it out on physical and it's like nowhere so i i thought i was r wrong I seriously thought I was wrong, guys, that it did not come out this week. I thought I was like, oh my god, I made a mistake. But no, it actually did. So it was just kind of weird this week, just the fact that you think a movie's going to be out because it's a popular award season movie, and it's like nowhere to be found. Just one of those odd things this week, man. Hopefully we'll see it eventually, but... That was just really odd. I mean, outside of that, I mean, there wasn't too much this week. I mean, I think things are going to get better starting next month. But this month was really touch and go. Sometimes we were able to find certain things. Other times media was really tough to find. It's not easy this time around for, for physical. I, I think with everything that's gone on with Hollywood and the pandemic... I think it finally caught up with physical media, and we've had to pay the price for a little bit. But things will get better, I promise. I sincerely do, man. I think think it will. But outside of the rare oddity of not seeing a popular indie flick this week, which you would think we would see, yeah, a little, little light on, on releases. Hopefully you guys picked up something good or checked out something interested in anything. Definitely let me know. As far as... I'm concerned, well, boy oh boy did I pick up some good stuff. I'm kind of going to bounce around a little bit, but I picked up a lot of great stuff. Now the first thing I picked up, guys, is actually a release from 101 Films. And that is none other than The Cooler. Look at that, baby. Nice. Oh, look at that art. So good. Love. You have to play to win. William H. Macy, Alec Baldwin, Maria Bello. Yes. This is a really solid movie, man. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this movie or not, but William H. Macy plays this guy that that is bad luck. Literally bad luck. Anytime somebody's around him or near him, they experience really, really bad luck. And he's employed by this owner of this casino, basically, to rob people of their money. Because, again, he's, he's so toxic in his luck 
that other people lose their money around him. And so he's he just affects that until he potentially falls in love and his luck changes. However, that might be more dangerous than his bad luck. Indeed it might, man. This is a really solid movie. William H. Macy is awesome here. Alec Baldwin is really intimidating and scary in his, his role. Maria Bello is gorgeous and beautiful. This is a solid, solid comedy, drama, thriller. It has a lot of really great elements to it. And this is another one of those gap releases that I've wanted for a really long time. And I've always been sort of like hesitating and... Other things needed to be picked up, and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm finally going to get this thing, man. So I decided, what the hell, dude, I'm going for it, and 101 Films still had it in stock with the really great slipcase, and of course, the main re release right here, very nice. Oh, finally happy to add this one to, to the collection, man. It's not one that's extremely well known, but I think people should find it more because I think it's a really satisfying film, man, with really solid performances, man. Very much well worth your time, man. Well worth it indeed. Not bad on, on this one, guys. I also ended up picking up the release of Wander Darkly. Now... I told you guys a while back that I would pick this movie up when I thought it was a really good price for me to do it. I found it at Target actually for like 13 bucks on sale. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get this because I don't know how long it's going to be in the stores. And it still came with the slip. The slip is in really good condition. So I decided, what the hell, I'm going to give it a chance, man, to, to buy it. And I'm damn glad that I finally did. I really like this movie, man. It's a great love story. It's it's really it's a really great love story wrapped in this sort of sci-fi paranormal aspect to it, which I really like. In fact, there's a really great quote here from Variety that says it feels like watching a poem, and I absolutely uh, agree. It's it's a really great one of going back in time, experiencing the history of this couple. The complications, the struggles, the happy times, the cherished moments, the disappointments, and the idea that you think that, that somebody has died and you get to see their life kind of flash before their eyes. It's really fantastic, really amazing, and I really enjoyed this one. And I've been wanting it for a while, but just wanted to wait till that price was a little bit lower and it finally was at that sweet spot that I decided I'm going to pick it up. So, finally got... Wonder Darkly. Not half bad, man. Now, I also, also, ended up picking up the Blu-ray edition of Shutter Original, The Mortuary Collection. Yes, I did, man. I gotta tell you, I really, really love this goddamn movie. I, I truly do, man. And again, it's very interesting because I am an old school horror anthology fan. I really am. I mean, things like, you know, the old school Tales from the Crypt show or From a Whisper to a Scream, Creep Show, Creep Show 2, Tales from the Hood, and many, 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 many more. Body bags, you name it. I love horror anthologies. And. You know, there is some horror anthologies that have been okay in recent years, some better than others, and I got to admit, some of them have been worth it, some of them haven't, but none of them have really given me that great feeling that I remember from back in the day, until I watched Mortuary Collection, and I was so, so amazingly just happy while watching it. And I don't know why, man. It's like people getting tortured and evil things happening to them. But yet, I just had this really great, wonderful sense of nostalgia from remembering the old school stuff. And this movie definitely brought back that feeling in a big, bad way. I think the performances are awesome. I think the stories are really genuine and cool. I like the effects in it. I, I think this movie's a real winner. I can't say that Shudder puts out a lot of winners all the time, but this one, man... Damn, this one is really good, and 
I can't deny how great it is because it really is. This is one of those movies that in years time will be one of those great cult classic horror anthologies that people are really going to talk about, man. It's it's going to take its time. People are going to have to find it. But when you watch it, it definitely reminds you of the old school stuff that I love so deeply that this movie just is is awesome. One of the better horror anthologies in the modern era. And I'm so glad I got to watch it. So glad I now get to own it. Another horror anthology in the movie collection. This one is truly worthy. And the next pickup that I got, guys, from the Dollar Tree. You know, it's kind of interesting because I I went thinking to myself, look, I'm not going to find anything new whatsoever, man. And it's probably going to be a lot of the same stuff, but why the hell not? You know, truth be told, hey, I'll give it a shot. And man... I was actually really happy that I went. I saw a few things that I didn't see before, and this one instantly tree intrigued me in a big bad way, man. And that is none other than Wolvesbane. Yes, look at this, man. The steel book, the Blu-ray steel book, for a dollar, baby. Yes. Oh my God, look at this thing. This is cool, man. I gotta tell you, when I instantly saw this, this intrigued me. First of all, Steelbook for a dollar? I mean, that's already intriguing as it is. And then the synopsis about getting recruited by Van Helsing to fight this vampire and the fact that Jeremy London is turning into a werewolf. It has, like, American Werewolf in London vibes, like, Underworld vibes, like, maybe, maybe kind of a hint of, maybe sort of, like, True Blood-ish, maybe? I don't know. Like, this thing looks wild, man. I was looking up stuff on YouTube with it, and it looks really cheesy, and it looks ridiculous, and so much cheese, but I don't mind that. <laughs> like, like I, I instantly want to know more about this, man. And on the inside, man, I, I like that. Look at that. Cool. Uh, uh nice. Yeah, man, I gotta admit, dude, this one really in intrigues me. It really does, man. I mean, I am a vampire lover. I'm a werewolf lover. I love those type of genres, man. Whenever you kind of mash it up together, I'm always sort of intrigued. Sometimes it comes across really good, like some of the early Underworld movies, and then sometimes it comes across bad, like some of the later un Underworld movies. But... I always love sort of the mashup together, and this this looks weird, ridiculous, bizarre, over the top, but for a dollar? Why not, man? I don't know what I'm in for, but for a dollar, I'm gonna give it a go. Honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna give give it a chance, man. I mean, I mean Jeremy London turning into a werewolf, fighting vampires. How could I not pick it up, guys? I mean, seriously. I am intrigued by this. And again, the steelbook for a dollar. How can I seriously, seriously go wrong? I'm looking forward to this. I really am, man. Decided to pick that, that up, man. I think that's a really great, great buy for a dollar, man. I was looking at this up on eBay, and it sells for about 20-ish dollars. So, I mean, I literally saved like 19 bucks. I mean, how can you really go wrong? S seriously, how, how can you, man? And last, but certainly not least, what I picked up from Best Buy. My pre-order that I got, man. Oh. You know, you know why I picked this up, guys? You know why? Because I had uh, the time of my life. Uh, and I never felt this way before, and never felt, yes, I swear, it's the truth, and I owe it all to you. I could, I could go on and just do the whole damn song. <laughs> oh, man. Dirty dancing, motherfucker. The steel book. Of Dirty Dancing, the Best Buy exclusive steelbook. Yes, I did. You want to know what, man? I pre-ordered this a, a while back. And I pre-ordered it for in-store pickup. And I thought when it was available for in-store pickup, I, I said to myself, oh, like, they're going to have other copies. 
to show off at the the Best Buy, right? And nope. Like li li literally because I had pre-ordered a copy, they sent a copy to the Best Buy location, but they didn't send any others. All they sent was my copy. So, yeah. Like, literally, it's my copy and nothing else. Nada. Zippo. Zilch. But I was so happy to get this, man. When, when, when they, like, came from customer service and, like, they, they were, like, bringing it, I was like... <laughs> like, I was, I was so happy. Oh, my God, man. Dirty Dancing. Jesus. Do you realize that I've never had Dirty Dancing in the collection? Ever. And I'm serious, man. This is one of my mother's favorite movies of all time. I watched this movie back in the VHS era. My mother and father taped it on VHS. I love the music here. I love Jennifer Grey. Patrick motherfucking Swayze, man. I mean, he was golden in this movie. He was what every guy wanted to be and what every woman wanted. That's what Patrick Swayze was. And this movie has it all. The dancing is electrifying. The music is infectious. It's it's so wonderful. The, the love story is truly heartfelt. Man, this movie is just gold. It's gold, pure gold, man. And this is awesome. I'm going to open it up for you guys because this, this is too good not to open up, man. I just, damn, dude. I love this goddamn thing, and I'm so happy to, to now have it in, in the collection in steelbook form. And it's kind of weird because I think, actually, Target was supposed to have a steelbook exclusive of their own for Dirty Dancing, if I'm not mistaken. But I didn't find it at any of the Targets that I, I went to. So, which is really weird, because I, I was kind of looking out, out for that, because I thought they did have an exclusive of it, but apparently not, man. Oh, look at this. So this comes off. So this this slip here comes off. So it comes with a slip, which is really great. Then, of course, you have the front here. Oh, so good. So good. And then the back side. Man, how the hell did he, he, he do that, man? Shit. Perfect. God, when that scene happens, you're like, you're like, oh, is he going to do it? Oh, it's, it's so great. Oh, Jesus, man. It's so good. That, and then on the inside, oh, cool, look at that, oh, man, oh, so awesome, oh, my God, dude, this, this is fantastic, holy shit, I, I am so in love with this steelbook, man, this steelbook is so, so awesome, man, and then, of course, the slip goes over it. So fantastic, man. I mean, this is so many great special features. Audio commentaries, feature rats, uh, you know, anniversary interviews, and so much more. Jesus, man. You know, it's interesting because sometimes you look at a movie, right? And you say to yourself, why haven't I owned this in the collection yet? I love this fucking movie. Why haven't I owned it? And... Then you think to yourself, you know what, maybe I haven't owned it. Maybe I haven't picked up the anniversary editions or all these other editions. Because maybe I was meant to always pick up this edition. And I gotta admit, guys, I'm probably never gonna own this movie again in any other edition. This is the edition. This is the 4K, the Blu-ray, the digital. I, I got it, man. And I am so, so happy happy to, to get this in the collection, man. I love this movie. It's, it's, you know what? It's not only my, one of my mother's favorite, it's one of my favorites too, man. I, I'm not gonna lie, dude. I, you know, and I just gotta say how much I miss Patrick Swayze. Truly, dude, I miss Swayze so much, man. I mean, whether it was Ghost or Roadhouse, this movie, I mean, hell, I, I'll even say, uh, Fucking Tu Wong Fu, man. <laughs> I mean, I just love Swayze. And there was something about him that has such great charisma and charm. And he, he, he was one of the greats. Damn, man. He truly was one of the greats. And we lost him way too soon. And, and it, it really bums me out, man. But...
I know that I can look back on movies like Dirty Dancing and all those other great flicks and just remember how great Swayze was and how electrifying he was and how how awesome he was in every movie that he gave it, it his 100% man no matter what it was whether it was dancing whether it was you know uh, doing weird naked pottery with Demi Moore or dressing in drag it, it, it don't fucking matter man he he was awesome and I miss him so much and this is one of those movies that really showcases the the power of Swayze man in the best possible way dude God, I love this movie so much, man. This is such a great edition of Dirty Dancing, the Steelbook, the Best Buy exclusive Steelbook. And it's all mine, baby. God, so cool, dude. Oh, my God. And I got to tell you, man, I think my pickup love this week was definitely on its A game. And that's not quite it, guys, because... I also got a couple packages in the mail for the final pickups for April, baby. Ooh, and these are some good ones, man. Now, the first package in the mail that I got is from 88 Films. Now, these are two titles that I am definitely looking forward to picking up. One is A Little Bronson Love, and the second is... Some very over-sexualized sea creatures. Very interesting. One is definitely one I've been wanting in the collection for quite a while. And, I mean, let's be real. Who doesn't love Charles Bronson? So, I picked up those two titles. And the other one I picked up is a release from Indicator. Now... This one, man, I'm going to be real with you. I have not experienced this movie in a very, very long time. And I mean a very long time. It's, it's a very sleazy drama horror thriller. It has one of the most infamous scenes in any horror movie that you've seen. It literally is one that is is so disturbing that you want to look away but you can't and i remember when i watched it the first time i was just blown away by the movie i was deeply affected by it and i never thought that i would actually have it in the collection I don't know, this movie and a movie like Martyrs ranks up there in, in a very high way of movies that I just never thought I'd ever have in the collection because it just affected me that much. But you know what? The, the, the movie's incredible and it's amazing and the performances are fantastic. And yes, it is disturbing, but it's a movie that really gets to you but I think it's a movie that's in a class all its own. I, I truly do, man. And I figured, man, I don't know if I want to revisit it, but I'm going to. And it's going in the collection. So I am very intrigued to finally revisit this movie after so many years. It's going to be a very interesting watch, man. But you guys. We'll not get to find out exactly what I picked up until my Blu-ray pickups video, which will drop, well, sometime down the line. It'll show off all the titles that I got for the month of April. And, man, Retro Collectors Limited. Boy, you've got some really great label love in here. Some stuff that's already out of print. Uh, man, some really great wild stuff that... I can't wait to show you guys. Cannot wait, guys. Now, a little update on what's coming up soon for the channel. Now, last week was absolutely insanity. It was insane. 
I had a very rough week, whether it was with work or my girlfriend um, taking her PhD exams and literally losing her mind, so that was fun. And it just was a nutty, nutty week, man. And, and I had the best of intentions wanting to, A, get up the review for Coming to America 2, but then something happened. The Dollar Tree happened, and instead of focusing on Coming to America 2, well, I focused on the Dollar Tree, and I'm very happy that I did. The, the video came out amazing. If you guys have not checked out the Dollar Tree hunting video that I recently did, definitely do that. It's a great video, but I did move some of that review stuff aside to do that, so this weekend, you are going to be getting the Coming to America 2 review. I know... Finally, it's going to come to you guys. I'm going to get up to you, I swear. Not only that, but if you guys experienced my latest live stream, you know that I had all kinds of technical difficulties. The Some weird stuff with YouTube was going on, and my live stream turned into a complete and utter shit show. And I wanted to do a live Blu-ray pickups video for you guys for the final haul of 2020, the December pickups. I wanted to get it done live for you guys and it turned into an absolute clusterfuck. So not only are you going to get the Coming to America 2 review finally, but you're also going to get a final haul video the December pickups coming this weekend as well. I'm going to get it done for, for you guys. You deserve it. Finally, starting to get back on track a little bit as, as well. So, it was kind of rough waters. I'm starting to steer things back in the right direction, hopefully. And by the way, guys, a lot of really great stuff com coming up. Because not only the Coming to America 2 re review, but in the next coming weeks, you're going to get... The Zack Snyder Justice League review, you're going to get Godzilla vs. Kong review, you're going to get the Mortal Kombat review, and much, much more. We got a lot of great stuff in the pipeline, more pickup videos, more reviews, some more live stream love, and of course the out and about craziness as well. There's going to be a lot of great stuff on, on the channel, so stay tuned, because it's going to be good. And before I let you guys go... Oh, I gotta talk about this one, guys. I have to. This is too good not to talk about, baby. Is Warner Brothers phasing out DVDs and Blu-rays? Damn, this literally blew up the goddamn internet, man. Wow. Oh, in late April 2021, social media users circulated a rumor that entertainment company Warner Brothers would start phasing out DVD and Blu-ray discs in 2022. But the rumor originated from a Twitter post that took a Facebook exchange out of context and blew it out of proportion. The tweet that was the source of the rumor has since been deleted, but an archived version is still available. And posits that Warner Brothers is doing away with all physical media in favor of digital streaming. Now, the original tweet says this. As of now, there are no plans to commemorate Daffy or Tweety's anniversaries next year or ever. The company is slowly transitioning away from physical media. There are no plans for any classic cartoons on DVD or Blu-ray that I know of, except for one project we are in the middle of, which may come out later this year or not. Anything is possible, we'll just have to wait and see. It includes both Warner Archive and regular Warner Home Video. You'll still see some new releases from both during the rest of 2021, but those were planned out last year. Next year, 2022, is when this year's changes will be felt. Yes, the Tex Avery sets sold well enough for the low overhead archive collection division, but in the big picture, it's peanuts, and the focus over there is now on streaming, meaning HBO Max. But in a phone interview with the person who said those comments, they were taken out of context. Beck said he was responding to a specific question from a cartoon fan about whether there would be an anniversary collections of Daffy Duck or Tweety, and it got blown out of proportion. He didn't intend the statement to go viral and be lifted from their original context or to be used as an authoritative source about the future of Warner Brothers DVD and Blu-ray production, he told us. 
I don't work for Warner Brothers. I don't know what's going on, on the inside. I was only responding to the fact that from my point of view, I don't know of any other cartoon releases. He also ended up doing a Facebook follow-up where he says this. Wow, I blew up the internet. It looks like a little response I made to a cartoon fan wondering if Daffy or Tweety's anniversary will be celebrated on DVD or Blu-ray has blown up and gone viral. First of all, anyone claiming that Warner Brothers is planning to phase out DVD and Blu-ray beginning in 2022 has taken my words and blown them way, way out of context. Secondly, I do not work for Warner Brothers. I occasionally work freelance as a writer or consultant to their home video group. I know nothing about the inner workings of that department. A few days ago, I was asked about a few questions by anxious fans worried about the future of physical media. And unfortunately, from my point of view, I didn't have anything new to report. Warner's is restoring their classic cartoons for HBO Max and to air on MeTV. And it's obvious that the streaming service is where the Warner cartoon library will live on for the time being. But, I repeat, I do not know anything about what's going on concerning their home video department. I do know that DVDs and Blu-rays will continue to be produced and that department still exists. All we can do is hope that they will continue to release their cartoon shorts on physical media. That's all I know. That's all I can say about this matter. Man. Damn. That blew up big time. I... I was on Facebook one day, okay, and I'm just scrolling through, and the next thing you know, I see Warner Brothers is getting rid of physical media, they're getting rid of DVDs and Blu-rays, and I'm like, what just happened? Seriously, what the fuck just happened, man? And suddenly, it's going viral everywhere, like, big news sources are running with this story and just going with it, and, like... Literally, it, it went viral all over the place, man. And it, it sparked a lot of controversy. It sparked a lot of debate amongst a lot of people. And man, God, you know, if you don't know what's going on, don't say anything, man. Keep your goddamn mouth shut because this, this caused a goddamn frenzy. I mean, it really did, man. And this is what I'm talking about, man. Physical media is this motherfucking important. Like, you would, you would think if, if physical media was dying, right? If physical media was dying and nobody cared about physical media anymore, why would this news report go viral? I mean, why would it spark so much controversy and go crazy viral? Because, because people still care about physical media. It's still incredibly important. And to see a major player like Warner Brothers potentially getting rid of physical media, that's a huge news story. And, you know, people had to come out and be like, no, 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 wait, wait, no, no, that's, it's, it wasn't true. I just was taking things out of context and all my, you know, it, it just was all over the place, man. And yet at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I don't want it to happen. But let's be real for a single second, right? Physical media is not guaranteed anymore. And this is the truth. It's just not guaranteed anymore, guys. And I'm, I, I'm just going to lay it on the line for you. It's not. And... All of these companies are focusing their hard-earned time on the streaming services. Whether we're talking about Disney, Paramount, Warner Brothers, Universal, you name it. Everybody is moving towards streaming. Whether it's Disney+, Plus, Paramount+, Plus, HBO Max, Peacock, you name it. They're all having their own streaming services. And it's all about content, content, content. That's what it's about. And this guy even ended up saying, when his words got mixed up, that the cartoon collection stuff, they are restoring it for streaming. As far as he knows, they have no plans to put it out on DVD and Blu-ray. Now, that could change, obviously, but he doesn't believe so. And... 
you know, it's very fascinating and interesting because a lot of these companies see streaming as the next great cash cow. Truth be told, they see it as the next great cash cow. And why put something out on DVD and Blu-ray when we can just put it on a streaming service and people are going to have to pay the money for it, right? They're going to have to. And if we put it out on DVD and Blu-ray, that means that they have another way of buying it. So maybe they won't want HBO Max. And we want them to stay subscribed to the streaming service. It's all about money, man. It's greed. Plain and simple. That's what it's about. And it's always been that way. And the best way that they can make money, they're going to do it. And if it's not through physical media, then they're just not going to give a shit. Truth be told. And I think it's... You know, look, I'm I'm always the hopeful optimist to a certain degree, but I'm also a realist. And I understand to a certain degree that these companies, they see physical media as a thing of the past, right? Yes, we're still doing it because the sales are still there. They're not as good as the streaming sales, but they're still there. But when those sales drop to a certain point where they feel comfortable getting rid of it, you bet your ass they'll do it in a heartbeat, man. They they don't care. You think they you think they care? They care because we're spending the hard earned money for them to care. When that dries up, so so will their patience. I'm just saying, man. You know, this sparked a lot of controversy and you know, it's interesting because I think a lot of people look at Warner Brothers is a huge major player and they see the, the catalog of movies that they have and say, wow, there's so much that still needs to come out on Blu-ray and 4K and DVD and to just think that they would end it is unfathomable. But think again, because it could happen. Nothing is set in stone. Nothing is guaranteed. And... If we don't fight for physical media, then these companies aren't going to do it for us. We have to fight for the physical media, guys. And I think this article really blew it up in a big bad way to say, hey, by the way, we do care about physical media. We are going to make this into a viral tweet, of a viral response, because we care that much. And it shows the studio that we do give a shit. And maybe they'll take physical media a little more importantly. Streaming is still king in their eyes, but maybe we've just opened their eyes just a little bit more, man. Just a little bit more. It was it was crazy. It was wild. I was amazed by the responses, man. No lie. I was absolutely amazed by it, man. I was floored. But people are passionate about it. And I can, I can understand it. I can't blame them. I'm passionate about it. And when you get people going, man... Man, they, they go on one hell of a diatribe, man. Boy, this time they really did. I'm curious as to what you guys think about this. Definitely let, let, let I mean, me know, man. Wow, this, this was a crazy, crazy one for sure, man. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely give it the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Check out the other Blu-ray and DVD Tuesday videos that I do. Movie reviews with my friends. Live stream goodness. Blu-ray pickup videos, movie hunting like Dollar Tree hunts, and much, much more. If you're a lover of movies and physical media, hit subscribe and become a part of the Film Fan Nation. I want to thank my great subscribers for all the love that you give me, the great support, the great feedback. You guys are absolutely amazing. You give the love to me, and I hope I give the love right back to you. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you are interested in sending the channel any physical media goodness any movie related stuff the p.o box for the film fan 108 channel will be down in the description below you know i love you guys so much you've been asking about us doing a p.o box something that you guys could send some movie related goodness our way so if you guys are interested definitely send us some stuff i'll do great um subscriber unboxings and show off all the great stuff that you send our, our way. So if you're interested, definitely send stuff to the Film Fan 108 PO Box. 
and keep up to date with everything I'm doing through Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Film Fan 108, keep up to date with everything I'm doing, plus special pictures and videos I do from time to time on social media as well. Alright guys, I will see you back next time for a brand new Blu-ray and DVD out and about video. Take care everybody, and remember, happy hunting.